Hello, everybody. My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist, I'm a designer, I'm a teacher, I'm a mentor, and I am here today to give you guys a free art lesson. Our lesson today is going to involve the face and learning how to actually map out the features to know where to place it in the right place, to place it in the right section, and it's going to come down to drawing something as simple as a little triangle that's going to give you all the feature sections that you need. So strap in, let's do this, and let's go. Hi, how's it going? Hey. How are you guys doing today? Our lesson today will consist of something actually really useful. Um, the things that I've been learning lately have been very, very cool. I've been learning how to unlearn a lot of the things that I've been taught. So at first, when I started drawing, I started drawing faces like this. This was always not easy for me. This was not easy for me for a couple reasons. First of all, I could not see depth in my actual shapes. I was not good at it yet. So I did not understand how things went from something round to something flat on the sides. And that was very complicated to learn. So having little things like sock eye sockets and holes and crevices and things like that in your actual body were something that I just didn't understand. So this was really hard for me, right? Understanding how to draw the actual head like this did not really come into fruition until I actually started learning how my actual body structure worked in the way of uh, the cheekbones and how the face goes around and stuff like that. But it still took years for me to understand how to actually draw these really, really well. And how to actually use that on a drawing was an even like a more annoying task because then you have to like draw your whole skeletal system if you want to actually learn to draw with those things in mind. And who has the time to draw every single piece of your anatomy, right? But what if I told you that you can simplify it almost to the point of like absurdity? Like we can simplify this to the point of a simple triangle in the middle of our face that will help us map out everything in an anatomical way. Let me show you guys. This is really cool. So the first thing that we're going to do, let me zoom in to the lovely people so you guys can see this better. Um, we're going to start with any face, any face. It doesn't really matter. Like I'm not going to teach you guys how to draw things based on style. That's up to you. I'm going to show you how to understand where things go so that you can apply your style to this. And I'm going to show you guys examples of this constantly. So let's draw a couple different shapes that we can make into faces. Shapes that are normally common for people that are used to drawing right now. Right? We are often normally in the general sense of drawing our faces in one of these many ways. Now, in order to be able to start drawing our actual faces, the first thing that we have to do is find the midline. So step one, find the midline. The midline can be very easily found in a shape by drawing through it by drawing a simple circle that touches the edges of your shape. This is a very easy way to give something perspective really, really quickly. So essentially, you're turning any of these into a spherish type of shape by doing so. And it gives you a front and a back. And it also gives you the ability to replicate this shape on the sides and flatten out your shape if you need to. So whatever this line is going to be first, this is going to be the way your character looks. And therefore, you're going to have a unidirectional way to be able to draw them going up, going down, and you're going to have that curvature that you require from the actual uh, viewpoint. But what do we do after we have our actual initial shape? Like, 
once we have this, everybody can draw a little happy face, right? But how do we actually start drawing according to this? Well, now we have to do another intersecting line. This other intersecting line is just going to be something to tell you where you want your eyes to be, right? This, you can just make it as simple as a little dash. Let's draw the eyes up here for this guy. Let's draw the eyes here. We'll draw the eyes here. Wherever your eyes are going to land, draw a little dash. That is going to be the beginning of your triangle. Draw the triangle as wide as you want your nose to be. The base should be about as wide as your nose will be. So if you want it skinny, don't draw it too wide. If you want it really, really big, you might want to draw a really big triangle. If you want a really tiny nose, let's draw a little tiny triangle. Okay. So now that we have the actual triangle, what does the triangle tell us? What, as you guys can see in this graphic that I just did before, so you guys actually know what I'm talking about, the flow of these lines give you a really close approximation as to what and where your next facial feature should be. So if we start with a triangle, we can go on to drawing just following these guidelines and figuring out a couple cool things. The first thing that we can find is our eyebrows by going up the side of our actual nose, like our triangle. This is going to give us the height of our eyebrows. And then if you follow this down, it gives you your cheekbone. The width of it is going to be dependent on what you want to create. Now, if you want a character that's looking three quarters, one of the sides is going to be touching. And then the other side is going to have a little bit of space. At the edge of your thing that you drew, this little infinity sign, the top part is going to be where your eyebrows end. So the top line here is your eyebrow line into your nose bridge. So you have a lot of information just by that initial triangle already, but it's not even like close to being done. Like once you have your eyebrows, you know where the side of your face is and you can go and this is your cheekbone. So now you only need to find out where your chin and your mouth is. But how do you do that? Well, let's draw the actual first part for all of them so you guys see how this works for all the different shapes and sizes. I'm going to put some variation in it so you guys see that it changes a little bit. To me, this was the most intuitive way to see the structure of the face. To me, it never really made sense to just draw like, like the people that draw. Like they just didn't work like that for me. <coughs> but this way made sense. This is my eyebrow line, eyebrow line, eyebrow line, eyebrow line. Okay, so now I have my eyebrows for all my characters and I didn't really have to do much. Uh, I need to know how much, how wide I want my nose to be at the top and the bottom because there's going to be two parts to my nose. There's going, it's essentially going to be a pyramid. Okay. So once we have a triangle, all you need to do to create a nose is draw a dot about as far out as you want your actual nose to be and connect all three parts. And then it gives you the perspective that you need to get that nose shape that you want. So if you draw that same triangle, dot, 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 connect, and then you stylize it, you can get your noses really, really quickly. So drawing it with a triangle already gives you the ability to draw your noses in any perspective you want really, really quickly. By just connecting a couple dots. So now we have an entire upper face system. We can add eyes in here if you want.
and the eyes can be any style you guys desire. Like I said, this is not a style based thing. This is more like a mapping features based thing. But that's not it. There's more. If you guys want, you guys can use that same initial triangle to come up with a little teardrop to your chin. And that little teardrop helps you map out the rest of your face. So that little teardrop gives you your cheeks, essentially like the cheek limits. So whenever you're drawing your mouth, you know that that's going to be where you have your little limits for your face. So if you're trying to draw really, really quickly, and you do like illustration work, like storyboarding and stuff like that, this is an amazing simple technique that you can use to be able to draw all your faces really, really quickly. Now, your chin goes on the bottom, so you have not stylized the chin. At this point, I can add superhero chins. I can make non-existent chins by just following through. I can make People like tucking in their shoulders. People that have like a really big body or something. Or just have a normal American blob. <laughs> so it's a fairly fun way to approach the actual structure of the face. And let me show you guys how it works whenever you're looking at it from different points of view. So like doing it from the front is really easy, right? It's like very gimmicky, like, oh yeah, it always works from the front. Well, what about the other views, Rod? What about the other views, Rod? What about the other views? Milky, where are you, Milky? All right. Milky wants to reassure you guys something. This is gonna be really easy, guys. This is gonna be really easy. <laughs> this might look so weird to the people that are looking at the webcam. <laughs> this is hilarious, like recording myself doing this. Ah, oh, Milky. Oh, oh. What voice should Milky have? He sounds like he sounds like he would be like a grumpy old man and like. Argh. But I'll let you guys choose that. I'll let you guys figure that out. All right, so let's keep on going. Let's draw the face in a couple different views so you guys see how this works in different like, ways of doing it. So let's draw a front view. We'll draw a three-quarter view. And we'll draw a profile view. How about that? So we'll do front view, three-quarter view, profile view. Well, the first thing we're going to do is find our midline, which we just did. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle. The triangle never goes flat. I don't like drawing completely things in perspective. Like, I don't like drawing perfect profiles. Perfect profiles are boring, right? Like, an absolutely perfect profile is one of the most, like, ugh, shapes that you can draw. Okay? So, whatever you'd like to do, add a tiny, tiny, minuscule amount of depth to it. Not, is it, isn't, it's not just going to make it easier to draw your noses by being able to connect your dots to your actual shape. Okay? You're going to be able to actually use those guidelines that we talked about to be able to come up with your features. It's remarkably easy and intuitive because every line guides you to something new. Every line that you draw guides you to a different part of your anatomy. So from here, if you finish drawing your teardrop, you end up with a very comprehensive way of drawing most of your anatomy features without really having to think much about it. So even views that are a little bit harder sometimes, right? Like the uh, ones that you're looking up and stuff. 
become a lot easier with this. Because look, look at how easy this is, okay? You draw your triangle. You follow these guidelines to the edge of your face. You follow this teardrop to your chin. From here, these guidelines are giving you, telling you where your ear is going to go already. So your ear is going to be around here. And then to draw the neck, you go from the bottom of your ears to the top of your chin. And you get that weird little curvature that is normally super hard to find. And then for your neck, it's just from the bottom of your ears to whatever you want your body to be. And then you connect the neck to the collarbone and you create all the planes that you need to draw your shapes looking up without any like style issues, without any like, oh no, well, where's the missing step? All that stuff becomes a little bit easier by drawing these things like this. What about looking down? It's Yeah, it's similar. It's the same thing. So let's look down. Triangle. The triangle to however long my nose is going to be, I connect all three. That gives me my cheekbones looking down, gives me the side of my face. And then I just got to figure out where I want my mouth to be. And you have a character looking down. <laughs> so it's just a more intuitive way of actually doing it. Okay? So it's just a matter of uh, understanding the visual aspects of simplification of an actual anatomy. So let me show you guys the quick like representation of this against an actual skull. So you guys see what we are mapping out in general. So the initial triangle that we draw, that initial triangle is going to be the crevice where our actual cartilage comes from for our nose. This is going to guide us to the very components of your anatomy that consist of your actual face. Okay? The things that I draw are just simplifications of these structures. These are the foundations of anatomy that we always skip. We always skip these because they're hard. And we skip these because we want to get to drawing what we want to draw. If me drawing anatomy means I have to draw more realistic, I don't want to do it. Well, it's not about that. It's not about drawing realistic or not. It's about actually understanding what you're drawing and actually being able to progress past seeing your very basic shapes, right? Once you understand the structure of things properly, like if you go and not even a master level, like you don't have to be a master at it. All you got to do is understand it to a certain like level, like not even that much. And you will unlock the ability to draw any style, any place, with anything, in any shape, in any form you want. Right? That is the goal. That is the goal when it comes down to anatomy. Like, it's not about learning every little tiny feathery detail of your life, like every single pore and shit. That's not what you learn anatomy for. You learn anatomy, so you learn the placement of things. So you understand where and how many things are in a body, right? Like, for example, the, re the way that the neck made sense to me was understanding that the neck had three sections, right? Had one, two, three. It had the cylinder that connects to the head, and it had the two muscles that connected to the shoulders. So I needed to find a way to simplify that, so I decided to just start drawing them like eyes, and an eye shooting a laser beam from here 
gives me the shape of my head. And then if I want a different neck, like a thinner one, I can curve it in. If I want a thicker one, I just make this circle bigger so that I have a bigger neck. And then that just made sense to me. Also, drawing heads like cylinders made more sense to me because drawing a head like a cylinder allows me to just take the two sides of the actual cylinder, like my ears, and then I just draw a chin wherever direction I need to, and I have my face looking in that direction. It's so much easier to me. Like, to me, this, drawing that, is infinitely easier than drawing a sphere. I don't know why. I just don't know why. But it is. And then once you start implementing your triangles, you end up with a structure for a face that's relatively good. And it's going to be consistent. And it helps you just like learn how things form. And eventually you won't need all those little tricks. You won't need the little eyeball, right? Once you get used to the actual shape of things, you'll be able to draw that like this. Could be a front view, could be a back view because it matches the anatomy nicely. Right? It matches regardless because you're basing it off anatomy. So it's not based on an actual like trick or gimmick you're just drawing your body structures so and you learn how to draw through them so that you can learn to draw in all like perspectives well. how do we know where to put the neck on the body Ooh, okay you guys this is gonna be the easiest trick to this like okay to get a proportion standard body, a standard body, and let me repeat this, a standard body that you guys can manipulate, it's incredibly simple, incredibly simple. This is like one of those times where you go like, ha that is not really, it can't be, it can't, but it is. And it's literally like this. Whatever shape rib cage you have, let's say you have a big one, a wide one, and a skinny one, okay? If you wanna know roughly the shape of the head that corresponds to each one of these rib cages, all you gotta do is draw an eyeball on top of this. Let me show you, and it's gonna be so cool for you. Like, first you draw an eye about a little bit smaller than the size of your rib cage. Okay, and then you give it little eye sides that are a little bit beyond your rib cage, a little bit beyond it. And I'm gonna show you guys what happens when you make them really big. So each one of those sections plays a role, right? Now that you have that eye, now you're gonna shoot a laser beam up. Shoot. That is the width of your average head for your drawings. Okay, so that is going to be for a standard character, a very standard character with no variations, this would be a very typical way to approach drawing the body. A circle, an eye at the top, and then a laser beam going up creating the shape of the head. But now, if you don't want to draw those proportions, what do you do? Well, since you know that this is the standard, you can easily keep your head about this size, but if you want your neck thinner, you can always make this eyeball smaller or taper the lines in if you want to make it a little bit more slender. Okay, you know the standard once you understand where the standard is, you can adjust it to fit whatever you need to. That being a woman, that being a man, it doesn't matter. It's an irrelevant thing, but we all have the same skeletal structure. So as long as you understand the underlying skeletal structure, adding like boobs and wider hip bones becomes really easy.
All right, let's go into the next one. This one has really long sides of the neck, like the eyes. Like, what happens when that's longer? Well, when that's longer, your arms have more space, so therefore you're going to have more space for bulk. So you end up looking like a much bigger dude because you have a much wider pecs and shoulder area. So this controlled how big of a volume I have here. So if I have that smaller, my shoulder is going to be much closer. Therefore, I'm not going to have as much volume. It's going to look a little bit less bulky. And it brings you to a completely different spectrum of what the character is supposed to be. Okay, so that is the easiest way to understand the proportions of it. And then once you get better at it, once you get really good and comfortable, you can start drawing heads like in different ways, like different styles. You'll learn that this is the width of the neck. This is the standard size of the head. But then I want a character that's bigger. So you start using the single, this little like connection point, this little laser beam. It starts being just the space in between the ears. All you need to use this for is to map out the space between the ears. And then if you do that, you can add whatever volume you want to the front, to the back. But it's always going to connect back onto your character in the right way. If you always connect something, like it always has to connect to something. In this case, it's the ears, right? So that is going to be my connection point. Any volume that I have on top of that is essentially going to be the same concept of drawing an arm. If I draw an arm and I draw a simple arm, it's as simple as that. If I want to add volume, I already know this is my basic arm. If I want to add volume, I would go in and learn where that volume comes up. Right? That's what you do for muscles. That's what you do for most of your body parts. So if you learn to do that for your face, you can start with a simple cylinder, map out your ears, and then start adding shapes on top, like pyramids. And then once you add a pyramid, you have your guidelines because you have your triangle at the bottom. And now you can draw your characters in any way you want. See what I mean? Like once you understand the concept of volume and how to see all these mapping points, drawing different styles and things just becomes a matter of just applying different lines to those guidelines. That's all that's required at that point. You want to draw like Disney? All you got to do to draw like Disney is learn how they apply the lines to that very basic style. Because you'd be surprised. It might not be the exact same system, but it's a very similar system for many people. Like people just approach it differently, right? Like the ways that I know how to draw the face are as follows. I know how to draw the face, obviously, with very basic concepts like the comic book style, right? Like drawing like that. Da, da 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 You split it in half and you draw your faces like that. Okay? That is one way that you know how to draw that. The other way that I know how to draw it is through the mask shapes. So if I draw any shape and I draw a mask, like a little bean bag, this gives me my nose canal, gives me my edge of my face, and it gives me my cheekbone so I can draw my rest of my face really quickly. That is one of my favorite ways, but I'm absolutely loving the triangle technique a lot more. The triangle technique is just, it's just too intuitive. Like it's just so easily like mapped out. Like it's, it gives you everything so quick. Like I thought the mask method was effective, but no, th this is way, way more intuitive. Okay. So learning how to do them like that was just a really good learning curve. And then there's multiple of other ways, like there's drawing faces as cylinders instead of actual spheres, and then learning how to add volume so you can draw your faces and your necks really quickly. That is another way that I learned. Drawing the heart 
like drawing all your features with a heart is another way that you guys can approach it. And that's another way that it keeps you limited to your cheekbones, your temples, and your chin. And it gives you, see, they all give you different guidelines, right? Like in this case, it gives you like a heart, gives you eyebrows, nose bridge, and mouth space. Okay, so this is what a heart does for you. A triangle gives you this. This, to me, is a little bit more intuitive because it gives you the same guidelines as the heart, right? The same guidelines, but it just gives you more. So also the mask gives you a lot. You know, it gives you a lot of information, but it's exactly the same. If you understand that initial concept, it's just, it just goes back and forth into the same concepts. It just depends on how you visualize it and how you decide that you want to approach it. And that is how you're going to learn better because that's how we do it. That's how we do. That's what we do in the Shia. <laughs> Anyways, we are getting close to the end of our lesson. So I'm going to finish off with a couple of examples. I'm going to let you guys know that I do have a YouTube channel. If you guys are watching me on TikTok, you guys can see much more, like hundreds of other videos on YouTube. If you guys want to like and share my stuff, if you guys learned anything today, I would like to please ask you guys to please share any of my content with anybody. It doesn't matter what video, whichever it is, leave a comment, share it. And if I taught you anything today, please help me reach more people so that I can be a bigger audience teacher to more people and get them free education as well. So that we can all grow together, create more cool art, and then, you know, get out of this whole, like, everybody has to do a remake for everything type of bullshit that we are stuck in permanently in this, like, day and age. Ugh, I hate remakes so much, man. Like, they need to start making, like, more original content like like they you know it's not all that hard like I, I honestly think that it's like just like silly that we keep on remaking everything but hey that's just how it is that's just how the entertainment world is i guess Hope you guys learned something today. Um, I like to always send you guys off with a nice, happy message. Um, I like to tell people that I love people the way that I want to be loved. So since I enjoy these little happy, encouraging messages at the end of videos, I will send you guys off with a nice, encouraging message on this Tuesday. Uh, if you're watching this on another day, it's still going to apply to you as well. Uh, so... At the end of my streams, I like to send you guys off with, I want you guys to go out into the world and I want you guys to love a little bit. And what does that mean? I want you guys to show some kindness to someone, even though they did not necessarily ask for it or require you to do so. Doing something, an act of kindness out of the kindness of your heart is sometimes the, the difference between someone... Um, being here or not so take it from experience be kind to someone you might change their life the next thing i want you guys to do today if it's daylight out for you i want you to go outside and take a deep breath of fresh air why well because we never really actually enjoy life until it's too late or until we get sick and until we actually start valuing it right so I want you guys to learn that your life is a journey. Your life is going to be a journey with ups and downs and in-betweens. And you need to learn to love that journey as much as you learn to love the destination you want to get to. Because life is all about that balance. Life is about understanding that you get both sides of the coin. And you have to learn to enjoy both. So learn to live a little bit and you guys will be good. During this journey of yours today, going outside and venturing into the wilderness of your backyards or your front yards, I want you guys to put on your favorite podcast or call your favorite friend that has the best 
puns or dad jokes. And I want you guys to please get them to make you laugh a little bit. If you guys don't have someone like that, go on Reddit and just actually just check out the coolest fun things ever. And then you guys will be able to actually get a laugh, be joyful, be happy. And that is essentially going to be like a key to life. And then since we are artists, we don't really get to get away from this much. So we have to draw a lot. And this is something that I help you guys out with. If you guys are drawing with me every day, when you go have your sketchbooks, you see notifications, then you guys have completed your 15 minutes a day at least. We drew for about 45 minutes. Most people don't stay for that long, but you guys have successfully done your part and getting better for today. Hopefully you guys learn something new. Hopefully you guys share this information with other people so other people can learn as well. I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. And if you guys want to support, there are books as well as courses and stuff like that that you guys can follow. Just follow the links in my description. Any video description has the links and stuff to my bio, stores, books, and everything else. So if you guys want to help, that is the best way to do it. I want to make sure you guys get something in return. And I don't want to just take your donations or anything like that. That's just not what I do. Okay. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I have a surprise too, though. Guess what came in? Oh, yeah. Mr. Clicky keychains are in. Woohoo! These are going to go to very special people. The first 30 batches are going to go for the people that I notice that are always helpful on streams. The people that are helpful and the subscribers on my Instagram that have been patient with me, um, they've been patient for months. So there's only nine of you guys there. So all nine of you get a keychain. And I'm going to send some to the people that help me with my streams and my day to day life. So, but whenever I actually get rid of these guys, I'm going to make some more and then I'll make some stickers and I'll make everything. So, yay! Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. If you guys want to see more videos, you guys can click on any of the other videos on my stream, on my TikTok. Everything has helpful tips for you guys. There's thousands of them. And like I said, if you guys want to help me grow, tag your favorite uh, art tip reviewers and stuff like that uh, with my videos. So hopefully they like blow me up and then I get seen by more people. Ah! <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. You guys are my favorite sketching buddies. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another lesson and I will talk to you guys soon. Later. Beep, <laughs> beep,